Uh, first, I'd like to thank the foundation for supporting my research and also for giving me this opportunity to talk about my research, the result. And after hearing all these talks yesterday, especially uh, this new idea that uh, cardiolipin just may be a shield <coughs> under oxidative stress. So I, I significantly changed my whole story and we organized my slides to support this new idea. So probably you can be the judge if this makes sense, okay? So when I, uh, so when I first started this project, we already had our own hypothesis that uh, cardiolipin content is more important than cardiolipin composition for proper function of mitochondria. And this hypothesis, hypothesis was from the uh, result uh, from our previous study using a, a rat uh, on different diets. So we randomized rats into four different groups and they were subjected to different high fat diets. One group with high amount of DHA or arachidonic acid or DHA and arachidonic acid and there was a control group with normal diet. And then after I think about eight, uh, 10 weeks and we saw that we analyzed cardiolipin composition so this is control group, and this 1448, tetra cardiolipin is the good cardiolipin. And DHA group, not much change, but only when you look at here, arachidonic acid was decreased in cardiolipin. But in arachidonic acid group, and as you can see, there's significant change in both groups, especially in here with DHA and arachidonic acid, when you look at this 1448, just eyeball test, maybe less than 10% of total content of cardiolipin. So there's huge changes in cardiolipin composition. But the content is not much different. This moderate decrease in arachidonic acid and DHA in arachidonic acid. But compared to compositional change, this is just minor. And the monolized cardiolipin increased a little bit, but PE, PI, PG, PC is not changed. And this mitochondria, and then we uh, studied function and there's a lot of numbers, but you can just compare across the lines. There's not much difference between uh, these groups. So after learning this, so we, uh, tried, to, we tried to test the same hypothesis. Uh, where should I go? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, go back one more time, please. Yeah, go back, please. Oh, it's, it's responding late. Back, please. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we tried to test the same hypothesis in this model that uh, decreased cardiolipin content is responsible for mitochondrial dysfunction in test knocked out mice. So just for a brief introduction, uh, briefly the method the doxycycline was induced after weaning, and then uh, we isolated two different populations of mitochondria, SSM and IFM, uh, from heart at the age of two to three months old, and then we analyzed phospholipid and oxidized phosphorylation and the mitochondrial structure and super complexes using the method routinely performed in our lab. And um, forward, please. So just, I'll just go to the result directly and, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so just uh, about these mice, as of almost, most of you know that they, have, they are very normal, healthy until three months of age. And by the way, it's not much different and heart is slightly decreased, maybe about 8%. And the mitochondria yield are not different between these group for both population of mitochondria, suggesting that uh, the amount of mitochondria are the same between two groups. And then we analyzed my, uh, phospholipid. Uh, and this is just, this slide shows how we analyze phospholipid. So we separate individual class of phospholipid and then calculate using a, a standard curve for, in, for each class of phospholipid and internal standard. So these are PE, PG, PI, PS, cardiolipid, monoids, cardiolipid, PC, and spingo myelin. Then, um, so using this, we calculate the uh, individual species, individual class of phospholipid, first in the heart. Uh, okay, yeah. So these are all the uh, 
concentration of phospholipid calculated, the PE is slightly increased, PG is increased significantly, PI is not changed, cardiolipin about half is down, monolite cardiolipin increased, and PC slightly increased. And also we look for lysol PE, PS, bingo minor lysol PC. These are not calculated, it's just a, a relative peak intensity compared to internal standards. So, but uh, no change in lysol PE, no, no, in PS, bingo minor lysol PC, not change between these two groups. These are in the heart tissue. And then we are uh, 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 determined the concentration in mitochondria, and then as as you can all expect that cardiolipin is decreased about by 50% and monolized cardiolipin increased by about 25-fold. Uh, and then when you look at these other classes, they all increased more or less. And especially, uh, uh, yeah, they're all increased. And then also total content of uh, phospholipids also increased. Okay. And then we also found <coughs> Uh, also found uh, increased dilysocardiolipin, two different types of dilysocardiolipin. This is ion chromatogram showing dilysocardiolipin and these are mass under these chromatographic peaks and showing a more acyl chain composition. And the structures are confirmed by MS, MS, and showing that uh, this dilysocardiolipin has two, two acyl chains on different uh, glycerol moieties, and this dilysocardiolipin has both acyl chains on the same glycerol moieties. Okay. Then uh, we'll, we'll look at the uh, composition of cardiolipin and monolysis cardiolipin. So this is com uh, cardiolipin, as you can see, this is a 1448. Tetralinoleonic cardiolipin is major. And monolized cardiolipin, this is a trilinoleonic monolized cardiolipin. So this is a major species. This looks normal. And knockdown mice, interesting is the, the, already the total concentration is down by 50%. But still, this 1447 is major. And there's a uh, species containing 16.1 and two 16.1s. In, uh, relative, relative content of these are increased, but still this is major in monolized cardiolipin. Now this 1186 tried in Leonie monolized cardiolipin is significantly decreased. So uh, next slide shows the uh, just profiles, the relative contents of cardiolipin. In cardiolipin, tetralinoleonic decreased from 70% to about 40% total content. And monolized cardiolipin, uh, this species decreased from 82, about 15 percent, so this is not a major anymore in this test knockdown mice. And then also we look uh, for the species in other class of phospholipids. So PG, no difference, PE, no change, and PI, no change. But when you look at the PC, these two species, uh, it's 802833, uh, so these two species, of course these are, uh, can you go forward once? species containing linoleic acid, so it's uh, supporting the notion that the PC is a major donor of linoleic acid for cardiolipin. So uh, and then we look at the uh, mitochondrial structure and using EM. So this is our uh, isolated mitochondria, and I don't know how they look to you, but it looks to very normal to me. And then. Uh, this is a typical morphology of isolated mitochondria. When you look at this, there are some uh, a species with the mitochondria with unusual structures like this. Can you go forward once? And this is a blown up image of a mitochondrion showing uh, this unusual structure. So you can see there's an increased vacuoles. And when we look at this Christie, the Christie structure is different. So we call this uh, a vesicular Christie. And these deformed mitochondria account for about 20% in SSM and 80% in IFM. And then now we look at the super, super complex. Uh, this is gel, uh, blue native gel, and there's no difference between SSM and IFM when you look at the wild type and knockdown. And there's a significant decrease in high molecular weight of super complexes. But interestingly, you look at this line, this is super complex one, which containing 
one molecule of complex one and one complex three dimer, and then one molecule of complex four actually increased. And then uh, uh, three complex one is increased, three complex three increased, three complex four also increased. So this uh, breakdown of high molecular weight of super complex, but still this is this super complex is increased. <coughs> and then we uh, check the uh, oxidative phosphorylation. So using uh, this the diagram shows different uh, part of, of mitochondria electron transport chain, ATP synthase, TCA cycle, beta oxidation, and transporters, and the translocase there. So using different substrate, can you go forward? Using different substrate to donate electrons to different sites, you can measure respiration of a specific enzyme you want to test. If you, you know, for example, uh, if we use this uh, and substrate for complex four, you only measure complex four respiration. If we you add a substrate for complex three, you just you measure complex three and four respiration. So, uh, uh, and then two, three, four, or one, one, three, four. So, and also you can expand to uh, other uh, substrate. So. I'll just show you the, uh, the first. This is a, a substrate for complex four, and this is substrate for complex three and four. So when you get this, there's a slight decrease in this respiration with uh, DHQ which is for complex three, and TMPD and ascorbate is for complex four. So there's a slight decrease in this, this level. And then we expand it to a glutamate uh, and, and a succinate is through one through four, one uh, one through four, and succinate is for two, three, four, and there's no changes. So this slight decrease in respiration at the complex three and four level doesn't affect overall respiration from one to four or two through two to four. And then, so there's we also test this, but uh, the Catherine this afternoon she is going to discuss more about this overall respiration, but we don't see much difference between two uh, using this different substrate. So. Uh, and then we also measure the uh, RS generation using uh, succinate glutamate malate as substrate. This is from isolated mitochondria, so we didn't find any increase in RS generation. So slight decrease in oxidation phosphorylation starting at complex three or four has no significant effect on oxidation of upstream substrate or RS generation. So, and then we also measured other enzyme activities, the citrus synthase, uh, succinate dehydrogenase, complex one, two, three, four, complex one, two, three, and two, two, three. So there may be slight decrease, but not significant. And also we measured uh, <coughs> ATP production with glutamate malate. So how much actually ATP is produced using different this substrate. So there's no much difference in SSM, slight decrease in here IFM, but not significant. And uh, we also measured the uh, activity of adenine nucleotide translocase not significant. So uh, as a summary, it has knocked out mice. Cardiolipin was decreased by 50%, and monolized cardiolipin was increased by 25-fold. And super complex is two, three, four, are significantly decreased, but super complex one is rather increased. And also my, mitochondrial deformation, we found 80% IFM is the, uh, has the deformed mitochondria and 20% of SSM. But the problem is this mitochondria well functioning, still making a lot enough ATP, and also not generating additional uh, ROS. So that's that's what, and this also actually uh, consistent with this. Uh, this mice they are healthy, no no apparent pathologies. Right? So that's the. Uh, um, the then the question is. Okay, uh, can you go forward? So this is. Uh, Okay, the question is, now the question is, is cardiolipin really important? Or maybe better question is, is cardiolipin more important than other phospholipids? Right, like uh, all this talk of yeast, like cardiolipin emolelling is not important for uh, cell growth. I'm not, I'm not familiar with uh, yeast, but so that's what they were talking about yesterday. And then, you know, <coughs> as I shown in the earlier my slide, that diet controlled red, red. I just remind you the composition of cardiolipin. Um, so this from here to here, 
but there's no mitochondrial functional change. And also, I forgot to mention that the heart in this mitochondria are normal. And then also, 50% uh, of decrease in test knockdown mice. Still, we don't see any significant change. So, the so one question is, what if this much change or 50% decrease happens in other phospholipids like PC or PI or like the PC increased 25-fold? This mitochondria will, will do better than this mitochondria? I'm not sure. Also, when you think about this uh, uh, cardiolipin composition between heart and brain, it is normally accepted that uh, brain is the most vulnerable tissue to oxidative stress. But in mitochondria in the brain, they look more like this. There's more uh, uh, highly unsaturated fatty acid, right? And also when you are, uh, <coughs> not yet. And also when you are, when I talk to people about these test knockdown mice, they are normal until they are expressed to some kind of stress, right? So they are exp Exposed to stress without this uh, enough, maybe cardiolipin, enough shielding. So that actually that all makes sense, right? And then I, for the last slide, I'm going to show you uh, one more evidence that how little these might think of their cardiolipin composition. So there's a different cardiolipin composition. You can see significant difference, right? There's a, uh, and this is cardiolipin of uh, the control mice fed on test knockdown, a uh, test uh, doxycycline containing diet, which is formulated based on, uh, uh, can you go forward once, 2.8% uh, fat content. And this is the same control mice uh, fed uh, on uh, control standard chow in the annual facility of Case Western Reserve University. They are the same age same type mice, but their composition is different ba based on the, the subtle change in the, their fat, con fat uh, content. And there's also, um, yesterday I was looking for this spectrum. I've, luckily I found this, and these are the same black six mice, but their age is, these are about, these are two or three months. But this is, I think, six months. But these, these are same uh, black six mice from Virginia, uh, and their my cardiolipin composition looks like this. And I think this is, I'm not sure, but this is, as m if my memory serves, this is six months old black six mice, mouse, and uh, this is 24 months old black six mouse. So now you can see the difference. And these two are also different because this is cardiolipin containing arachidonic acid, one arachidonic acid. It's, it's much lower here, but it's much higher here. So I think the, what this uh, tells us is that these mice, they don't care about their cardiolipin composition as long as they are unsaturated, so they can be work as a shield. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, acknowledge some uh, people who helped this research my uh, previous lab, and also Barcelona Foundation and uh, Center for Mitochondrial Disease for supporting this research. Thank you. I, um, that was a provocative talk. Uh, and I think maybe another way to say the problem is, uh, is whether the timing of this uh, TAS knockdown is really the key factor, because uh, mm -hmm. you did yours at weaning. I think some of the other studies were done at birth and others were done in embryos. And I guess you're using the docs in the food or the? Food, yeah. Which I think gives a lower dose of docs. It's a 625 right. milligram per kilo. Right. But anyway, if we just concentrate on the timing, um, yeah. it's not just a technical pro a question that's relevant to how we use the mice, but it's, it gets that uh, if we think about TAS replacement therapy uh, directed to someone who's already formed their heart, mm -hmm. uh, if what you're saying is true, then you know the timing of the docs may tell us that TAS replacement therapy postnatally may not be that effective if it's a developmental cardiology problem. Um, 
so that you know somehow the TAS is affecting the formation of the heart rather than its postnatal function. Or of course it could be a combination of the two so you have both a yeah. developmental problem and a, a postnatal function problem. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very interesting to observe uh, how you can manipulate cardiolipe and cardiac compositions and molecular speciation. So now this was normal phase chromatography, right? Yeah. Well, so in normal phase chromatography, you will have hard time to detect cardiolipin oxidation products and oxidized cardiolipin species. That's one in the, that will be good probably to look at those. So quantitatively, because you're losing cardiolipin, so it goes somewhere. So what is exactly happening to this? And so what do you recover is not very clear. So okay, you, asked, you can tell me that you are recovering uh, different species of monolyza cardiolipin. I couldn't quite grasp whether quantitatively they do or do not correspond. So, but the other product will be either free fatty acids or oxygenated free fatty acids. And these you have never mentioned. Do you have this information? So we didn't look for free fatty acid or uh, glycerols or uh, neutral fatty acid. This is only focused on phospholipid. And also, uh, each class of phospholipid were tested for their recovery using this process. And also, we tested oxidized cardiolipin 2 on this system. Mm. So when you have a control, uh, chemical oxide cardiolipin mixed with cardiolipin, when you uh, compare just uh, using alternate standard, right? You mean, you mean what's the alternate standard, right? There's no difference in the com relative composition content of cardiolipin versus oxide cardiolipin when you go through this uh, uh, column. So this is all stand developed and tested, validated method for or at least this kind of this six class of phospholipid. That's why we couldn't, we didn't uh, calculate content of uh, sphingomyelin, uh, PS, lysopes, these were not, we didn't validate the benzoid yet for these. So we only validated so, But I missed uh, still the point. Did you detect or did you not detect oxidized cardiolipase? No, we didn't see. We look for Using this method, also uh, reverse phase, yeah. we didn't see any oxidized cardiolipin, detectable amount of oxidized cardiolipin. Mm -hmm. All right, so then if that's so, so then uh, the, these oxidized species could have been hydrolyzed to yeah. form different lysa, mono and dilysa, and oxygenated yeah, fatty acids. Yeah, that's more likely, yeah. Okay, which then kind of uh, indicates and suggests yeah. for you where to go. Yes. Thank you. Very nice uh, to know that you can manipulate cardiolipin in heart. Uh, what about monolysocardiolipin? And, uh, uh, you know, when you have multiple species of cardiolipin, have you been checking for the species that you have in, uh, in this case? Yeah. You know what? I would bet that all the monolysocardiolipin species would be uh, derived after the lose of the linoleic acid. You know, the distance yeah. between each cardiolipin and monolyso in all cases would be minus 284. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember this or yeah. not? Because I have seen... Yeah, I exactly remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in my head, but this mo usually monolyzed cardiolipin mirrors the composition of cardiolipin. But only exception was in this bar syndrome mice. So there's a... I, I don't know if you remember this, but compare cardiolipin, monolyzed cardiolipin in test knockdown mice, there's increased... Uh, so cardiolipin still looks kind of normal, right? But in monolyzed cardiolipin, there's a lot of species with containing 16-1 and 16 zeros are increased. So they, in this case, they don't go together. But in other diet control or uh, aging difference, monolyzed cardiolipin composition always mirrors cardiolipin composition. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. 
Thank you very, <clears throat> very much. I, your, your data got me th thinking about a puzzle I've had all, all along. I was taught that cardiolipin is essential for the function of electron transport chain complexes and other proteins, and then, all, then along comes Barr syndrome, and so they have reasonably, they have, they have functional mitochondria. Um, so the, the question would be, there are two, two questions really, and Michael might be able to uh, address this, is, is something taking the place of cardiolipin? And that really would be important to find out if there is some other phospholipid taking its place. The other possibility is if the, car and the, what, what I recall, the cardiolipin is stoichiometrically bound to various complexes, is there, do those complexes have enough cardio, real cardiolipin or whatever structure is needed to maintain the function, which you would miss if you're looking for a total cardiolipin? I think both those questions would be useful to, from a therapeutic standpoint, to understand what is going on. Yeah. So actually, we tried to uh, isolate complex 3, and we extract, tried to extract cardiolipin from complex 3. The level was very low, so we didn't see uh, quantifiable peaks of cardiolipin. But we actually saw very small, tiny peaks close to base, baseline, so we could see this uh, just barely visible cardiolipin peaks from control mice, but we never seen this, I won't say never, but we just tried once. <laughs> so we didn't see this peak from test knockdown mice. So that may be true. Okay, thank you very much. That's, that's very kind, very thought-provoking. <laughs>